Hi guys, it's Katie and today I'm going to make some fermented watermelon rind. So I have taken all of the flesh out of my watermelon and I have all the rinds here. So this I'm just going to go ahead and put in the refrigerator and we'll be enjoying that over the next few days. Alright, so what you're left with is the rind from your watermelon and my pieces are sort of unevenly shaped and sized. That's just the way I like to cut it off of my watermelon. Um, most of the pieces I have here are mostly white. Some pieces I did kind of dig into the flesh so there's some pink left on there. Some people say that you should cut that all the way. I've done it before and this amount of pink wouldn't really bother me. Um, when you ferment it, it does have a slightly different texture, but the white and the pink, in my opinion, are equally pleasant, so I don't have a problem with that. There's also still the dark green, sort of very thin peel on the outside of the rind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a vegetable peeler to peel that dark, thin, dark green rind off. And I have this really heavy duty vegetable peeler. I love this vegetable peeler. It's um, Rosely, I guess is the name of it. I got it off of Amazon a long time ago. And it's really heavy duty. I also like it because you can change out the blade, which I've never done. I've never needed to. Um, but it's a nice option so you don't have to throw away a perfectly good peeler just because it went dull. And this is a great peeler for watermelon. Also for, um, it does a great job on butternut squash as well. So you could also just use a paring knife if you don't have a heavy duty uh, peeler. But I'm just gonna peel away that dark green rind. Okay, so next I'm going to cut my watermelon rind up. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reserve a few pieces because if I get started chopping, I will forget. So I'm going to use these pieces to hold the rest of the pieces under the brine. And then I'm going to just cut these up in, uh, I guess, maybe like one inch by two inch pieces. Try to make them all even. So there is all your watermelon rind cut up and ready to go. I probably won't use all this. I'm just going to make one batch because we won't go through it that fast. Um, and I'll probably get more watermelons through this season so I can always make more. So I'm going to use a half gallon mason jar. And I'm going to spice mine sort of like dill pickles. You can do it just salt water. Um, and you can also change it up, do anything that you like as far as additional flavorings. So here is what I have. I have some dill from the garden. And I'm going to put all this in the jar first so that the seeds and things don't float to the surface as easily. I have six cloves of garlic. I have five or six little tiny dried chilies, which would probably be the equivalent of one dried chili if you were using um, normal sized chilies. These are very small. I have some peppercorns, about a teaspoon of peppercorns, about a teaspoon of mustard seeds, and about two teaspoons of coriander seeds. And again, you can use whatever you like. You can use those pre-made pickling spices, or you can just do get, uh, dill and garlic, whatever you like. So once I have all of my flavorings in the bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the watermelon rinds in the top. And before I fill it up too much, I want to kind of press it down just to make sure things are settling down in the most space efficient way possible. I want to pack these nice and tight so I can get as much as I can into this jar. Okay, so I have it filled up just about to the shoulders. It's in there pretty tightly. And now I'm going to use these pieces that I didn't slice up. And I'm going to make sort of a, a lid to hold everything down. And I'm actually going to shave this down so it's nice and thin and flexible. Like that. And I can put it down inside. Like that. And then I can take another piece, sort of crisscross it. the 
other one the opposite way. Okay. So you can see how that kind of crisscrosses so that the pieces of watermelon rind won't pop up to the surface. And that ended up being about half of that watermelon rind. So if you wanted to do a second whole batch, there's probably enough to do a second half gallon batch. Next, I'm going to make the brine, and the brine is just salt water. I'm going to aim for a 2% salt solution, so that just means 2 grams of salt for every 100 grams of water. And we'll turn on the scale, tearing out the vessel, and I'll go ahead and put some water in here. Seven hundred. It's easier if you have a nice even number. So seven hundred grams of water times two grams per one hundred grams of water means I need to add fourteen grams of salt to make a two percent brine solution. So I will tear this out again. Add fourteen grams of salt. All right, I got 14 grams of salt. Now I'm just gonna stir to dissolve. Once my brine is made, I'm just gonna pour it over my watermelon rind, see if this fills it up or if we need to make more. Okay, and then I'm just kind of jiggling it to release any air pockets that might be trapped in with all those tightly packed watermelon rind. So you can see, I don't know if you can see the liquid level is right there, so it's not quite to the top. As this ferments, liquid will come out of the watermelon rind. It will also soften and sort of compact a little bit down further, and that liquid level will come up. So I'm going to see if when I put my weight on, if it's completely submerged. This is just a little glass jar, a little um, pimento jar, and it fits nicely into a wide mouth jar. And when I press it down, the brine liquid does come completely over the surface. And I think I might even need to pour a little bit out. Just a little bit out. Try again. Okay, so press it down. Screw on this lid. So like I said, it probably will spill out. So I'm going to put it in just another container like this just so that when it spills out it doesn't make a giant mess all over my counter and I'll just leave this here on my counter where I can keep an eye on it and I'll show you what it looks like as it goes through the stages of fermentation. Here are the watermelon rind pickles on day two. Already showing signs of fermentation. I did end up making some more. This is, I just cut them into little tiny matchsticks and this just has salt so there's no dill or garlic or anything. You can see how the liquid, which was just salt water, is now cloudy if you shake them a little bit, you can see some bubbles rising to the surface. Same with this one there. See the bubbles? There's small bubbles at this point. It hasn't overflowed or anything yet. So I'm just going to keep my eye on it, leave it on the counter to continue to ferment. All right, guys, so here's an update on the watermelon brine pickles. I think it's day four or five. And you can see that <clears throat> there's been quite a few bubbles come up. There's actually a kind of a layer of bubbles on the surface. I kind of dislodge some of these bubbles or some pretty good bubble activity. It, you just saw that drip come out. It did come out and overflow, so I just emptied that out, rinsed it out. Um, I might need to top it off because some of these are kind of close to the surface of the brine. But I can either just shove those down a little bit or top off with a little more brine since it's kind of leaked out. Here's the other ones. This one has lots of headroom. This is how I like to do it with lots of brine on top and lots of headroom. So. These ones also are bubbling very nicely. So I'm just going to let them continue to ferment. I usually let things ferment until the very active bubbling dies down at least. So I'll check on these in another few days. All right, guys, it's been about a week. I'm going to try to pull one of these little pickles out. Actually, I'm going to pull this one out right here because it's the one that always seems to want to look like it's coming above the brine. So I will kill two birds with one stone. I'll pull this out and taste it. Push everything back under the brine. Let's see. Put this back together. And it's still pretty firm. It's a little bit softer. I'll go ahead and taste it. 
It's very crunchy, has a lot of dill, garlic, all those flavors. It's not quite sour. And it still is bubbling pretty significantly, I think. So I'm going to let it go for a little bit longer. I thought a week would be enough. I'll go, you know, a few more days and then taste them again. So here are my watermelon rind pickles. I just tasted one. They taste superb. They're nice and sour now, salty, garlicky, and uh, dilly. Just exactly right. Just like a really good dill pickle. The texture is slightly different because it's not a cucumber, but the texture is still very good. And you can do this same process with some other vegetables. You can try all sorts of vegetables, but uh, green beans and carrots are two popular choices to turn into dill pickles. But these watermelon rind pickles are also very, very good and made from what was going to go in my compost pile anyway. So I'm excited to have an entire half gallon to eat and enjoy over the next few months. This jar will go straight into the refrigerator and I will be enjoying it throughout the summer. I hope you enjoyed this video, found something helpful. If you have any questions about this project or other fermentation projects, feel free to leave them down below. I will do my best to answer your questions, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.